We talk a lot about funding in the vegan community, the plant-based agenda. But is there a carnivore agenda? Is there special interest funding in the carnivore community? There certainly is big money here. I don't want to attack anyone in the community. I want everyone to question the flow of money and influence in the space and how it could be harmful. For example, the carnivore community is actively supporting a person who has clearly used much of the same language as my videos, except avoids the focus of meat quality. Essentially, my message, but with feedlot beef. He even went on to make a podcast with a similar name to mine, merely one week after my podcast was created. People say I don't own information and that there is a more important message to spread. But I've spent thousands of hours researching all of the hundreds of videos I've done. And now this feedlot meat marketer of a doctor is charging $500 per consultation to the people totally unaware how this guy twists information to basically shill them on cheap industrial meat and supplement products. This doctor got his MD in psychiatry two months ago, has been on the carnivore diet for a mere matter of months, yet he is getting on podcasts with hundreds of thousands, millions of followers. What kind of special interests could be behind this guy's rise? He's only been on the carnivore scene for a few months. Isn't this a bit concerning? Why has this guy come out of nowhere with so much support. He sure is peddling the same ultra-processed supplements such as collagen powder that are made from feedlot beef just like everyone else. Maybe the people making these low-grade animal foods are behind his rise. I have been on YouTube since July of 2016, making videos focused on nutrition, health, becoming the optimal version of yourself. My goal has always been to spread the message of nutrient density and I have always given credit to where I get my information. I don't mind people using my ideas and spreading the message of quality animal foods, but I get upset when I feel like people are corrupting these ideas. I've always minded my own business for the most part. Then towards the end of 2017, Beginning of 2018, the carnivore diet started becoming popular. Sean Baker, Jordan Peterson, Michaela Peterson appearing on the Joe Rogan experience. There was quite a bit of press around this at the time. I reached out to each of these people asking to collaborate with them, but I was ignored on all fronts. I've always had positive feedback. People always telling me how much my advice has improved their health. But recently, since the carnivore diet has grown, I've had a huge uptick in criticism that doesn't make sense to me. Why criticize a promoter of better meat? Aren't we supposed to be in this together? Others pushing for higher quality meats and questioning the corporatized meat industry have had similar endless pushback and criticism. I'm puzzled and dumbfounded how my seven years on this diet seems to be worth nothing and everyone else is completely uninterested in having me be part of this community. Wouldn't I be a good selling point for the carnivore diet? And people are just now realizing that the stuff I've been preaching for the past few years is correct and my name is seldom mentioned. What would warrant, what would explain ignoring someone with such a presence in the carnivore community? Now, I came across a bunch of puzzling and strange patterns. I reached out to Ken Berry in early May to be on my podcast. He agreed to it, but then radio silence completely ghosted me. And one week later, he was on Dr. Feedlot's podcast. 
I've had hundreds of people begging Thomas DeLauer to collaborate with me on the carnivore diet, but he didn't. Next week, he was on Primal Edge Health's YouTube channel. I'm constantly left wondering, what seems to connect these people together? Why don't they want to collaborate with me? All of these carnivores that seemed uninterested in me and my focus on quality meats seemed oddly interested in the carnivore bar. 520 backers pledged almost $85,000 towards this meat bar that likely contains meat byproducts, things like pink slime, by someone named Philip Meese not known in the carnivore community. He had 10 people who pledged $1,000 and three people that pledged $5,000. I tried my own hand at Kickstarter and had nowhere near the same results, despite having a stronger following and far more promotion. How is it possible the carnivore bar did so well? Both Philip and myself had Michaela Peterson tweet our companies. I even had Jordan Peterson tweet my company, but it didn't boost my sales one bit. So then I go to read Philip Meese's updates on the carnivore bar. He said in one of the posts that oxidation was a huge issue for making the bar, but to oxidize beef would require very large commercial machinery, industrial processes, that a person making bars in his house wouldn't have access to. So according to this, it appears that Philip Meese was doing production runs in a large commercial facility, but that cost tens of thousands of dollars. These facilities have minimum order amounts. If he has facility access and money, I am wondering why did he need the money from Kickstarter? On top of that, in his Obstacles and Solutions post, he's talking about this food production like a food scientist, as if he has a doctorate degree. But his background is this person who came across the carnivore diet, lost a bunch of weight, and found his true health. But this guy is a food scientist or has access to a highly skilled industry food scientist and is working in a commercial facility. None of this adds up to a true started at home with no money grassroots project that people tend to believe. Now, we have to note that the carnivore bar uses grain-fed meat, probably feedlot beef with heavily processed industrial tallow and pink slime. Sean Baker has always advocated for grain-fed meat and Ken Berry doesn't seem to care either. Neither do any of the other carnivores. They aren't critical about meat quality and grass-fed, and we know there are significant differences in the health of the meat and treatment of the animals. But how does this all tie together? Cargill Foods. Cargill is the most valuable privately held company based on revenue. 70% of their net income has recently reported to be from animal feed and animal product processing, especially beef processing. The executive chairman of Cargill has actually said that local agriculture is worse than conventional agriculture for the environment. Cargill Foods is also trying to get their feet wet in grass-fed beef. When Michaela Peterson was promoting the carnivore bar on Twitter, someone called out the grass-finished part, where Philip Meese responded. The dialogue that followed was incredibly complicated. The inquirer talked about adding mix to cough rolls in the food product, as well as the water activity and pressure-based protocol. Philip Meese responded without hesitation completely understanding everything. Philip Meese is not your average person who is only working in his home kitchen. And he isn't just involved with the carnivore bar. He was promoting another Kickstarter for Keto Fest. The backstory of this Keto Fest is an eerily similar sob story to what Philip had for his carnivore bar. 
It also had an incredibly high amount of funding and a small amount of people. And then you have Brian Sanders from Food Lies supporting the carnivore bar as well. Are all of these people connected to Cargill Foods or another major meat company or feedlot meat industry group? Why would Sean Baker, Michaela Peterson, and Jordan Peterson be allowed to speak on the Joe Rogan podcast about the carnivore diet? Where would this Food Lies documentary get funding from? Why are all of them sponsored by Butcher Box? Why did Jordan Peterson host a presentation with a Monsanto executive? What did it take for Monsanto to convince Jordan Peterson to present alongside them to the American Farm Bureau to promote GMOs? The American Farm Bureau received $100,000 from Monsanto. What do you think Jordan Peterson got? If Cargill was backing so many people, it would explain why the carnivore community is pushing grain-fed feedlot crap beef and generic, mostly grain-fed beef that is legally sold as grass-fed, even though it is grain-finished. No one wants to talk about 100% grass-fed. The only beef that doesn't depend on feed or chemicals from companies like Cargill and Monsanto. I am not accusing anyone of anything. I just think we need to accept there is clearly funding in the carnivore community and I am not a part of it. I am angry that the message about nutritious quality meat has been co-opted and is now being used to sell people shitty cheap beef, ultra-processed supplements, and meat byproducts under the guise of nose to tell. I want you to ask tough questions. Ask people why they seem to exclude certain carnivores who are absolutely behind the movement for more quality meat to improve the health of everyone. I'm sure the points I've made here are only the tip of the iceberg.